Hi guys, welcome back to The Crafty Author. My name is Anissa, I am The Crafty Author and welcome to my quilting room. We are continuing on with our Pinwheel Prairie Point Baby Quilt and it is turning out adorable. So I've already gone and gone ahead and made my first pinwheel here. I am going to show you how I make these pinwheels and how I get them to line up so very perfectly. That one I got lucky with it lined up exactly perfect. Now, I hope the rest of them do too, but sometimes, you know, um, it's all in the technique and it's all about sewing the correct seam allowance and also correct pressing. So I'm gonna show you how we make these. I'm going to be cutting these down to 10 inch squares. Originally, I was gonna do nine and a half, but I'm gonna do go ahead and do 10, just to make it a little bit easier for everyone if you're following along. And so we're just gonna jump right in. I've already started doing some. So I'm gonna just turn the camera and show you how I do this and we're gonna get a bunch of pinwheels made. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do is we're going to sew our blocks together. I'm gonna to put one of my main fabric pieces right sides facing up, and I'm gonna put one of my alternating pieces right side facing down. So you'll have both of the right sides facing each other. You should be having the wrong side facing yourself. And I just make sure that they're even and lined up And then I'm gonna put a pin right here just to hold it together while I sew. And then I'm gonna sew all the way around my square. You'll do that for all 12 of your square blocks. All right, so if you have a circular mat, a circular cutting mat, now is the time that you're gonna to wanna to use this because what we're gonna do is we're going to cut our fabric and we're gonna do it on the diagonal, making an X. So what I do is I line up from my stitch line in the corners, from my stitch line in the other corners. And that's what I use as my guide. If you use the, the points of your, your fabric, it won't turn out right because if you didn't sew it exact and you have any kind of a little bit of um, discrepancy, it will throw the whole thing off. So you wanna sew from your stitch line from corner to corner. Okay, the other thing that I have learned is that you do not want to mix up your, um, your triangles with other pieces in your pile because if you do, again, they won't fit because each one that you sew is unique to what you have sewn in this batch. So for instance, I will take this and this one these two pieces and I will put these together and I use clips for that and then I will do the same for this one as well and then I will keep this set together and I usually pin it but what I'll do is I'll just put another clip on there okay so I know that those go together and so you're going to want to have some of these clips real handy Thank you. 
All right, so now we're at the pressing station. I'm using a wool pressing mat. Um, I find that this holds the heat in better. So if you do not have one of these, oh my goodness, I highly recommend them. All right, so I'm going to start pressing these. What I wanna do first is I'm just gonna set that seam and then I'm going to use my iron to push that seam back and just press. I don't iron, I just press. You wanna make sure that you have all of that there because you don't want any pieces like popping up like what I've got here and just smooth it out. Set that aside. I'm going to do the same thing with the next piece. I'll just make sure I press it. And then the next one. Now you could press the seam open too if you wanted to, but it won't let it nest like it um like you'll need it to when you go to put your pinwheels together that's the key here to putting a pinwheel together is the nesting so again i'm just doing it like that you could also take your fingers and go like this if you wanted to before i've done that before but i just find that i end up burning my fingers so now i just Take my iron and just let it sit on there for a little bit. Next, we have these little dog ears. And so we need to trim those off. So I like to do that before I start putting my pinwheel together. So I'll just trim them. And you're gonna do that to all of your little pieces. And once again, you're gonna wanna keep these together because of sizing, like I told you before. It's just easier if you keep your pieces together, trust me. I have learned this the hard way in making pinwheels. Because <laughs> it's really easy to mess them up if you're not careful. So I'm just trimming these little dog ears right here. And now I'm going to lay out my pinwheel. So I want my pinwheel to be facing like that. I want you to be able to see it. Okay. So I'm going to turn it until I get it the way that I want it. And once you do this after so many times, you'll have this down and you'll know which way you want to do it. So that's the way that I want my pinwheel to go. So all of the fabrics are coming into the, to the point here. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my two top pieces and I'm going to put them together here on this side. And I want to butt up my bottom seams here. So I'm going to nest those and they will lock together when you go to feel them like that. And then I am going to use pins. And then I forgot what I was doing. So if you lose your spot and you forget what you're doing, you can always unfold it and make sure that it's where you wanted it to be. And it is. So I'm just gonna pin right there where we nested that. And then I'm gonna pin here. Now you don't, have to do this and you can use clips if you want to but I find that for this part of it pinning is very very helpful so that is my top piece this is going to be my bottom piece and again I'm just going to nest those two seams right there together like that and they just lock I want to make sure 
that I didn't just mess that up. I always do this. I always have to go back and look because I don't know why I do this all the time, but I do. So, yeah, that was right. When in doubt, double check. You don't want to, you don't want to make a mistake right now. You'll, it's easier to just undo it, double check yourself and then go back to it. I've made too many of these where I've should have double checked and I didn't and then had a colossal mess. So, and trying to tear out and seam rip pinwheels is not fun at all. It's quite tedious. And then things just never seem to line up quite right in my opinion, so. All right, now I'm gonna put another pin in here just to hold this down because I don't want this fabric to shift while I'm sewing it. All right, so this is my top piece. This is my bottom piece. I know it's my bottom because I've marked it. And now we're gonna head over to the sewing machine and we're gonna attach it. So we're ready to start sewing. So we're gonna just sew our top piece. We're gonna sew on this side down where we have all of our pins. We're just gonna start doing a quarter of an inch. Okay, now I don't do anything with that. I don't cut my threads or anything at this point. Right now, I'm just gonna grab my other piece and I'm gonna start sewing that down as well. Okay, I'm gonna cut my threads now and I'm going to remove all of the pins that I have holding this together. I'm going to just put them in here. And I am going to take my top piece. They're attached, as you can see, okay? So you don't want to cut that little string because that's actually going to help us. So I am going to open up my top and I'm going to finger press my seam and I'm going to press it this way to the right. Be careful not to stretch your fabric. And then I'm going to take this bottom piece and flip it. And I am going to press that little seam that way to my left. And then I'm going to make sure that I did this right. Well, we're going to find out. And then I'm going to put my two side my two seams together here with that little piece of thread that's holding it together that is going to nest those right there right together so you can feel them lock when you do it and i'm going to use a clip to clip that part and then i'll use a clip to hold these pieces straight along the edges here And I'll use this pin because I don't have one nearby. And now we're ready to start sewing straight down this, this edge here. out of bobbin. Okay. All right. So now we've sewn that together and now is the moment of truth. And here's what we have. 
voila. All right, so now what I'll do is I will take this over to the iron and we're going to press this out. Okay, so here we are. We're just gonna go ahead and fold that. I'm gonna just press this a little bit and then I'm gonna use the iron to just press that seam. And then I'm gonna smooth it out. And I'm gonna make sure that everything is nice and smooth here. And it looks like everything is. And as you can see, I can hold this right everything is lining up perfectly in that center so that's why I say pinning is really really the key to this um, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna trim this down we're gonna go ahead and trim this block down all right so now we're at the round cutting mat again and I am going to trim my block down now I want to trim this to a five in or to a ten inch block so ten by ten so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my big ruler and I'm gonna count over five spaces. One, two, three, four, five, right there. And I'm going to lay that five line right onto my seam line, right on that middle seam line right there. And I'm gonna make sure that I am right on that and then I'm going to cut. We have our first side cut. This is how you square up the pinwheel blocks. Again, I'm gonna lay that number five line from my ruler right there on this line right here on my seam and I'm just gonna cut. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna turn it. We're gonna cut it. One last cut. So let's count it. Let's make sure that that really is a 10 by 10 square. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So perfect 10 by 10 square. Right there. Okay, so we have a perfect 10 by 10 inch square here with pinwheel. Looks pretty cute. Wait till we get them all together. It'll look even cuter. Um, so if you would like to follow me on social media, the links are down below in the description box. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. If you'd like to share it, that's great because sharing is caring. Don't forget to click the little bell. You get notified each and every time that I upload an awesomely cool new video and everything that you need to do this quilt is on my blog at craftyauthor.com and the link will be down below in the description box as well. Keep on crafting. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.